All right, here we are, ready to go. And I want you guys to know that I truly appreciate the fact that I have this opportunity. I have this opportunity to speak to you directly, my audience, my friends, the students of the gun. So thank you for being out there. and Thank you for listening and paying attention and all the good stuff that you do. Uh, we had a good weekend. We had a good Father's Day weekend. Uh, the kids uh, came over. Grandbabies were here. Got to spend some time with the grandbabies. I have uh, I have an infant grandbaby, and then I also have a feral uh, grandbaby. I have a feral child. <laughs> Maga started referring to as, as a feral child. <laughs> and sometimes that, that fits. Sometimes it's true. <laughs> Any of you who've ever had a a 2.5 year old running around, if you've ever had a 2.5 year old running around, you know of which I speak. And a lot of you grandparents out there, you magas and pagas out there, you know of which I speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, so the, the feral grandbabies are going home today. Uh, but that's okay. We'll see him again soon. Oh, we had a, we had a, Jared and I, oh, did you want to talk? We, we, Father's Day, I had a manly Father's yeah, we Day. We spent a nice Father's Day morning out uh, yeah. making sure that the eagles were fed and the cows were safe. Yeah, we may had, uh, we, we were out uh, working on our, uh, our coroner's licenses. We were working on uh, getting our coroner's licenses by, and you're like, what? Well, people are like, what? what? We were, well, we were performing ballistic autopsies uh, on uh, prairie rats. And uh, we, we used the uh, hats off to the folks at Sierra Ammunition, the, the green box guys. They have what's called the Varminter. I think it's called the Varminter, isn't it, uh, Jared? Sierra I, bullets. I think it's Varminator, because like Terminator, Varminator. Is it Verminator, Varminator? I believe it's Verminator. Well, I'm going to go to the Sierra Bullets website right now because I can, because I'm an American. And uh, because For I'm those American. those of you that aren't in America, you can also get to the Sierra well, you, Bullets yeah, you website. Can go, well, I don't know. Some places they might not be allowed. It might be blocked. Who knows? It might be blocked. You know, if they're living in like a People's Republic somewhere, they go to look it up and the, and the commissar says that they're not allowed to see it. No, but uh, we, it's, I'm looking here, looking up. There it is. It is called the Prairie. We were all wrong. <laughs> it's called the Prairie Enemy. Huh. It's the Prairie Enemy line, and uh, you can get it in uh, 223 Remington. And what we were shooting uh, was we were shooting the 69 Green Blitz King. But we were shooting 556, five, not 223. Two, I don't it's different. Mm, no, it was, it, was, it was that. I got to stop doing that stuff on the public show because yeah, people think I'm serious. Yeah, people are like, they write you letters. They're like, let me explain yeah. to you. Remember when, uh, <laughs> way back when, when the, when the guy shot himself in the boot and I was talking about how rain, how his feet were going to get wet yeah. in the rain and people were writing letters. They're like, no, Paul, you don't understand. In, in, in England, a boot is what you Yanks refer to as the trunk of a car. And I'm like, yeah, I get that, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Uh, sarcasm. Got that. It's called sarcasm. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so the Prairie Enemy, uh, it's a green box. It's got a, a, a feral-looking uh, prairie dog on it. looks like a zombie prairie dog. Uh, we went out, and uh, we spent a few hours out in the field, and... Uh, uh, shooting at prairie dogs and and uh, ground squirrels and and uh, somebody who looks a lot like me harvested a badger. Yes, I have a fur bearer's hunting permission slip, and uh, uh, it's a good pelt. And we're we're what we're doing right now is we are uh, we are in negotiations with a taxidermist. How about that? How's that sound? We're in negotiations with a taxidermist. Like, why would you shoot a badger? Because if if you don't, they get you. <laughs> Badgers are so mean. <laughs> they are. They're so mean. <laughs> uh, you know how they get their their dens? They just wait till another animal digs it. Then they go in and they kill what's in there. And they're like, "This is mine now." It's a smart animal. This is mine now. <laughs> so I put forth the effort. With yeah. Else so I uh, 
we, we went out and we spent uh, about three or four hours, a good morning, about morning in the uh, uh, God's great wide open wilderness uh, with our rifles, living like free men, not making a lot of noise, being actually very quiet while we were doing it because we can do that out here. It was quiet time. Yeah. And then I came back and I took myself a Father's Day nap until until the feral child got up and ran up and down the hallway and slammed. You want to tell them about your, is it good or bad that you have suitcases with wheels on them? It's, um, depends on the It's kind of a catch-22. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, on one hand, it entertains children for a, a quite a long time. On the other hand. If you're trying to take a nap. Yeah, the suitcase. Is that what was happening? Yeah, she was ru- she was running the suitcase up and down the hallway, like, slamming it into the wall. just get into actual sleep and then kablam. Like, what's going on out there? Uh, so I got up. And I said, you know what, Sunday, I need, this is my workout day. So I lifted Biatches. That's right. I didn't make an excuse. I didn't say, oh, it's Father's Day. I don't have to. Actually, I said, it's Father's Day. I should. So Gift I did. Gift yourself on Father's Day. That's right. All right. Let's, uh, there, there was a warm weekend here in town, and there were garage slash yard sales going on. And uh, I'm going to talk about yard sale or garage sale guns for our Duracoat moment. Sorry, we never played the intro music, so I guess we'll Oh, we didn't? Today. Oh, we didn't do this intro music? No, we never did the intro music. Oh, we should do the intro music. You should definitely do that. Okay. Are we still on the teaser? No. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yeah, sometimes that cold open is just, uh, it's en, it's en fuego. It's, it's sometimes the cold, cold open. No, sometimes it's on fire. That too. I just, I just keep going. I just keep going. Keep going. So, uh, but now yeah. we can, we can go to the, uh, garage guns for grandma or whatever yeah yeah now we can go to for grandma no 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 grandmas in this one but i mean there could be but uh, now we're talking about garage sale guns in the duracoat finished firearm segment of the day Bada ba boop ba dee doo. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about garage sale guns. Uh, this weekend there were some in town. It was it was nice on Saturday, at least for a little while. Uh, the sun came out. And it was warm, and and they they were having uh, they had a rodeo in town. They had a rodeo and a woodcutter's jamboree, kind of like a lumberjack competition, you know, and. Uh, because of that, a lot of people took the opportunity to set up tables by the road and have yard sales and what have you. We were driving around, and, and uh, I saw that they one of them had a table, and I could see rifles. I could see the wooden stocks of guns. So I thought, well, you know, um, I don't really need another gun. <laughs> but it didn't hurt to look, right, Jared? It didn't hurt to look. Exactly, yeah. So... I got out and Nancy's like, I'm just staying in the car. You can go look all you want. Like, all right. So I walked over there and uh, checking them out. And, and it was not, I would say, not uh, unlike most garage sale, yard sale gun displays. There was a, a, a plethora of the cheapest fire handguns you can get. There was, there was a Lorsen. For those of you out there, you're like, Lorsen. Yeah. There was a Lorsen handgun. There was a, a Keltec P11, the original model, like the model that goes back 15, 20 years. There were the Ruger P89s. This is that you guys are like, what? Is this your antique shopping? Yeah. yeah. A Ruger P89, uh, the ones that are pre sharpened, they come pre sharpened from the factory. <laughs> Uh, to slice your hands open when you're working the action. Yep, uh, they did that. Glove that, gun. That was nice of them to do that for you. Um, and then there was a whole bunch of wooden stock long guns. There was uh, a bunch of uh, tw- uh, 22s, like uh, your, uh, what is it? 
Marlin Model 66s, oh, yeah. and uh, several bolt action guns. So I'm looking, and they had tags on them. They had little, you know, they didn't even have tape. They had actual tags with the little strings. BBs. Separate thought, but BBs before I leave. Okay, BBs before you leave. All right. Um, BB King. So apparently all of these guns had been kept in closets because the the stocks were were worn the wooden the 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 wood on the stocks was worn you could tell and all of the bluing was worn on every single one of them mm. right it had that typical like it was all it was worn around the muzzle was silver you know around the uh, ejection port area silver the the handle part of the bolt action was you know you could see where the bluing had rubbed off you know that kind of stuff the typical grandpa's gun that's been in a closet since since 82 or 78 or whatever you know uh, i would say 50s but that'd be great grandpa's you know and I, I was thinking i was looking at these guns and the first thing that occurred to me is this is a this is a good job for duracoat right here this would be yeah. a uh, this <laughs> this what was it uh there was a commercial it was a commercial like this is a job for i can't remember what it was but it's like this is a clean? job for yeah, Mr. Clean or whatever. This is a job for Duracoat right here. Uh, and the cr the crazy thing about this, and I I exercised some some discipline, some personal discipline, because there was a couple that I thought mm, I might like to have this, but the prices were way high. And, you know, I don't I the, I I love an optimist, but this dude wanted three hundred dollars for the a 20 year old Caltech P11 like double MSRP you can no, buy like, a new one for less than that um well i mean they're probably like 299 right now for a brand new one uh but i'm not giving you 300 bucks for a 20 year old Caltech <laughs> pistol uh he wanted 150 bucks for the Lorsen i'm like dude tell you what you give me 50 bucks and i'll carry this away for you How's that sound? <laughs> oh, they discontinued the P11. <laughs> so you oh, so it's, 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 so it's, it's a, a rare classic gun. now. You yeah, can't get it anymore. <laughs> it's an antique. It's a classic. Uh, I I think he wanted around four hundred or five hundred, like four something in change for the Ruger P89. Like, I it, like an optimist. I really the do. P11, the one that Zach was pocket carrying for a while. No, no, no. Which, no, that was a P380. Ah, uh, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah, P380. Uh, any Hoosier, my point is this. If those guns wouldn't have looked like they'd spent 30 years in a closet <laughs> and they, 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 they scraped all the rust off of them before they brought them out and put them on the table, uh, I might have haggled with the guy. But if you've got a situation, you know, in... If you really want to get five hundred or six hundred dollars out of your grandpa's old bolt action, then invest a you know a fair amount of money in some Duracoat. You can get the Dura Blue and re-blue the barrel so that it looks like a new gun, uh, or or you don't have to. I don't care. You know, I, I probably could have haggled with the guy, but it was a situation where I was like, uh, do I really want to haggle with him? Oh, and yeah. <laughs> All the scopes for an investment of about fifty bucks, maybe sixty bucks. All the, the a lot of these rifles had scopes on them, and so, they were so for an investment of about sixty bucks, you can get Dura Blue Badass. There you go, Dura Blue Badass, uh, and you can make it look like new. And if you want to redo the stock, Duracoat actually has wood refinishing kits too. It's not just colors. Uh, so, or maybe. Maybe, and this is the other thing I was going to say, Jared, is let's say you do go to a garage sale, yard sale, and you find a good deal on, you know, let's say this guy had a, a single shot Stevens 20 gauge for 250 bucks he had on it. I'm like, bro, come on. Oh, but if you do find a good deal and you're like, oh, this is a good deal, but it kind of looks worn, like, you know. It, it's seen better days then you can buy it from that guy if you can get a good deal take it home and make it look really nice with the dirt coat so there you go there you go yes uh and and you know 
I don't know. Sometimes I just had to, I see what people are doing and I just shake my head. So I'm like, I, I, you know, I appreciate an optimist. I really do. But when, when your eyes are open and you know what things are worth, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to give you, I don't think I'm going to give you $150 for a 25 year old Lorsen pistol. I don't think it's going to happen today. <laughs> But who knows? Maybe a gangbanger came by and it's like, yo, yo. And he, he drops some, some ducats on him. and <laughs> All right. It is time now. Well, to acknowledge our friends, SDS Imports, SDS Sierra Delta Sierra. If you go to Sierra Delta Sierra Imports right now, right meow, they got some slickety slick 1911s. They've got the, uh, they have the, uh, what, VP-12 shotgun, which is really a very inexpensive uh, gas-operated shotgun. Uh, they've got a retro shotgun. They've got the, the, the uh, wooden furniture shotgun uh, from Takarov. It's got a hardwood forend and a hardwood stock, but it, el- but it also has sights on it it's got a rail and sights i'm looking at this thing i'm like that is crazy how do they get away with charging so little for these guns you you guys might want to get a hold of these before they're all gone but if you uh would like to win one for free you're like i i would like to win one for free well there you go uh go to sotggiveaway.com that's sotggiveaway.com you got nine days and 14 hours from the moment I speak these words in this microphone to get in on the June contest. And uh, you can win a talker of TBP Marine. That's a a stainless and polymer semi-automatic magazine fed shotgun. It could be yours if you follow the rules and click here to enter. So there you go. Oh man, uh, I, I, I don't know what's going on. There were no high point firearms. Jared, oh, there were no right. high point firearms at this. There were Lorsons and Rugers and Keltex, and there was a couple of other things that were, you know, it, it's the it's when people when you got no money but you want a handgun anyway. Um, <laughs> there wasn't like you know a lot of these when you see the grandpa garage sales and the and the guys who were sitting there like watching the table, the one guy had oxygen and he was leaning on a cane, so I'm oh, yeah. assuming a lot of these old guns were yeah. his. And, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of times you see these things in the end there. Oh, I know what they had. They actually, he actually had a gun that looked like a Luger. I didn't pick it up. He had like 500 bucks on it or something like that. So, I, uh, it was too hot to touch. Too was too hot to touch. Too cold to hold. Uh, but yeah, you check that out. Good. If you want to check that out, come to Encampment, Wyoming, uh, the second weekend of June, and you mm-hmm. can get the garage. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you can be there for the garage sale. But uh, no, there were not any high points there. There were not any yeet cannons. There were no yeet cannons present. If you want a yeet cannon, or if you want one of the threaded barrel high points, you probably should go ahead and get it right meow. Uh, they they had caught up. <laughs> You're like Paul. You keep saying that 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 these these manufacturers were caught up, and and what do you think is going to happen? Oh, gee, I don't know. Nothing. Everything's going to be great. Don't even worry about it. Matter of fact, if you were thinking about it, I would wait until the prices go down. This this is when Jared, when when I'm you, and people yep. start writing me letters, you're like, "What are you talking about? Don't tell people that." <laughs> no, I'm going to tell people you shouldn't be buying ammo. You should. That's. Did you see that uh, May May about real modern problems require modern solutions? No. It was it was a May May with uh, uh, Dave Chappelle, and he goes, "When I go online and leave bad reviews for my gym, so it's not crowded." Oh, that's funny. <laughs> modern problems, modern solutions. So that what I'm going to tell you guys is, don't buy guns, don't buy ammo. It's all going to be. It's the prices are going to go down. Everything's going to be available next year so don't buy anything right now that way the prices for me won't go up <laughs> You're like, is this guy is this guy being serious is he super serial 
Super. Um, super. Thanks for asking. But uh, yeah, no, on a serious note, if you've been thinking I should get one of those, then you probably should. Yeah, that's that's the answer to that. Because uh, the closer we get to the election cycle, the worse it's going to get. All right. Now is the time for me to hush my mouth yes, and for you new a, people. It's a great maybe, transition and, to the next topic. And you old people, you just listen to. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Hey, Zach, before we go any farther, will you do me a flavor? Yeah, what's up? Uh, well, in, under the, uh, in the little space underneath the Brownells bullet points topic, will you throw in the, the Jukesy link to the VZ58 review? Got it. Yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. So, But that's not what I wanted to talk about during the Brownells bullet points. I wanted to talk about what's available from them and what you should probably be paying attention to. So listen up. It's bullet point time. Boom, ba doop doop ba doom bam boom. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I went to the brownells.com website. I did get a Father's Day message on my phone this weekend. It was actually all about gun builds. Did you get one, Jared? Yes. You got one too? Yeah. And you know what? Uh, remember when we were reviewing the Brownells retro guns, the XM177 and the 16 Echo One and all that stuff? You remember that, Jared? You do remember, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and we told people, like, hey, these are pretty slick guns. They're pretty cool, and they're not priced badly. Matter of fact, Colt had an XM copy, and their the Colt XM copy was almost $1,000 more than the Brownells one. It was oh, crazy. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was like twenty two ninety nine or something like that. I was like, What? I know how much aluminum costs. That's a lot. Well, if you did not take advantage of that, then you are Sierra Oscar Lima. Yes, you are Sierra Oscar Lima because they're no longer selling those as completed firearms. Right now, if you want one, you need to, you're going to have to buy the parts and put them together. So... Sometimes when we recommend stuff and you say, yeah, that's nice. Maybe in the future, I'll just wait. You can do that. You're an American. You wait all you want. But sometimes things just go bye-bye, and that's the way that is. And what's going on right now is the, uh, well, Brownells has the CCI Blazer Brass available in 945 and and 40 if you see if you're one of those guys um well if you got a 40 and you have to feed it you're like i gotta feed this thing man I don't know. Uh, they have it in stock available for purchase right now they have they also have other nine millimeter they have the american eagle nine millimeter they have the magtech nine millimeter they have the salir salir and below the s and b nine millimeter it's in stock is it the prices that we were in 2019 when I got on this microphone and said, hey, mm -hmm. if you need ammo, buy it. No, uh, because those days are gone. Bye bye. But if you got it, if you if you got a gun, you got to feed it, right? And you got to feed it. So it, it's sad when I'm looking at 30 something cent around nine mil thinking that's a good price. Yeah, it's so sad. But this is 100% made in the USA, brass cased ammunition uh, from a reliable it's federal owned CCI, federal cartridge owned CCI, in case you didn't know that. Uh, it's available right now for purchase. So you either need it or you don't. You either want to shoot or you don't. 
Uh, if you're if you think, well, I'm just going to go ahead and wait until after the election and buy my ammo then because it'll be cheaper. <laughs> Is it going to really? Is it how it works? Yeah. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's there right now. So if you want it, get it. Now is the time. Now is the time. And something else I wanted to talk about, because we we like to talk about uh, guns and gear and what have you and hardware during the Brownells bullet points. Uh, we just released, Zachary just put up, uh, my review of the VZ58, the side folder. Uh, it's the side folding version. Uh, it's the check answer to the AK. I know it's not a check AK. People like all these purists out there. It's not a check AK. It's its own gun. I understand that. Calm down. And I understand that the box of of tissue that you purchase from the store is not Kleenex. I know that Kleenex is a brand name and only one thing is Kleenex. And that one over there, the generic one we got from Walmart is not Kleenex. I know that a gelatin dessert is not Jello. I get that. You know, we talk about band-aids too. I know that every adhes- self-adhesive bandage is not a band-aid. So calm down. It's freaking people who yell. We, 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 the first time we did that, people are in the comments. Rah, 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 rah. It's like, you need to get better hobbies. <laughs> you need to get better hobbies. But the VZ58 is actually, it's a pretty cool gun. Uh, it's very unique. Uh, it does fire the the Russian 762 by 39 the magazines are not interchangeable with an AK, but they have the same. I, I, if you put a steel AK mag and an aluminum VZ58 mag right next to each other, the curvature is identical. Someone said, oh, yeah, the curve on the VZ is different. No, it's not. It's identical. You know why it's identical? Why would it be identical, Jared or Zach? Because. Because it's using the same ammunition. Duh. Because it's it's using the 762 by 39, and you know how the 762 by 39 is. It's that you know funky bottleneck cartridge. Um, so that's that's why it's the same. But it is a steel. I like it's, how Zach put the title. It was the VZ58. Check it out. Ch- 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 check it out. Check it out. So it has a steel machined receiver. Uh, it has aluminum magazines, which is weird, which is actually, for that time frame, an aluminum magazine was unusual. Because at the time, they were making yeah, steel. steel mags, yeah. and then they decided that it would be cheaper to make bacalite magazines. I, people are That's, like, what, what is this? It's Bakelite. It's not, it's not pronounced bacalite. You don't know that. Do you speak Czech? Do you speak Slavic? No? Shut up. Uh, yeah, the furniture, the the furniture, the fore end and the pistol grip on that gun are bacalite. The couch and the love seat. Yep, they're they're they're, they're big light. Uh, this one, it, the standard VC fifty eight has a fixed big light stock on it. This one has a side folder. So, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, and and if you're looking for if you're looking for either VZ58 guns or furniture kits, they're pretty much non-existent except for the auction sites. So if you go to a place like gunbroker.com, you can find stuff there. If you're go if you're looking to buy them from a a, a retailer, you know, they're not going to be there. Uh I, I looked this weekend and, and pretty much every place that had them in stocks is, you know, they got a page and says, currently out of stock. Would you like to be informed when they're back in stock? I'm like, actually, no. Because I know how the world is and the and <laughs> the idea that those are going to suddenly come back in stock in the United States. Uh, under the current criminal administration, there's no way they're going to allow you peasants to have something cool like that. Uh, they're not going to allow it. So, yeah, our brown nose bullet points today is they have ammo in stock, including 9mm. If you want it, you should probably go ahead and get it. If you don't, then don't. I don't care. And if you want to watch a video about something really cool, you can go to the jukesy.com. That is the brand new, that is the platform for uh, for free speech. And it is, what, what, what is the title? Uh, Your Story, Our Technology, Better Future. Juxy. J-U-X-X-I.com. Go and if you're, there. 
Yeah, and if you're not following the Student of the Gun channel on Jukesy.com, well, you suck, and you don't want to suck, so go ahead and uh, follow us. Yeah, there you go. All right, now that we've uh, we've knocked that out, let's go ahead and uh, let Zach remind you of what is new and cool and interesting. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yeah, and uh, if you guys, if you were remiss, uh, if you were late to the game uh, and you did not order a Dad Rules book for your dad or a Dad Rules coffee mug for your dad, then you'll probably be forgiven if you just go ahead and do it now. Uh, if you yeah. go and do and order your dad a super cool Dad Rules coffee cup, uh, and when it gets there, you give it to him and he'll be surprised and, and pleased with you and he'll think you're a good son or a good daughter. So. Yes, in, yes, indeed. But equally as important as that, we also still have the coffee available right now. The Arabica. What is it? Arabica? Pimpan Coffee Arabica. 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 We still it's have available, that available for pre-order. Yeah. Yes. And actually, I w- like it is now out of pre-order. Now, if you buy it, it will just get sent immediately. So I'm going to cut that part out of the, not, not the show, but I'm going to delete that part of the title. Because now it's just full on. Just buy it and you will get it swiftly. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. We have... You need to get some of that. Do you guys not have some already? <laughs> we have what? No, I don't have any. Oh, you um, don't have any of the coffee? We tested no. it, but we need to get some. Oh, I, I figured you guys were part of the testing group. We were. No, we weren't. The Matt Reynolds group. was, oh, and Matt Dorito was, We've got a and bunch Scott of Hambrick views. was, um, and Kevin Hammond was. Yeah. This is, this is how honest we are. Scott Hambrick was not a fan. And we put the we put the review up anyway. Yep. Because that's how honest now, we are. Did, is the full thing there where it has the the original review and then the follow up? Because at first he wasn't a fan, and then he said something about it. Says he tried it a second time and different brew style, and he liked it better. It says I literally uh, just copy pasted all the reviews. So, <laughs> oh, sweet. but it says he liked it when it was cold. So if you like cold brew coffee. Uh, he liked it cold brewed. At first blush, the beans didn't seem over roasted. Were not oily or ground. I'll tell you Aroma what. was good. Coffee uh, has been well received. This is a Kevin Hammond. It was w- with his family. Well yep. received with his family. Uh, first impressions. You have to read uh, Matt Doritos and Matt Reynolds. Yep, Matt Dorito. Uh, they did uh, full reviews. Yep, um, and Matt is a coffee connoisseur. He's got a, he's a coffee kind of source. So anyway, if you want to be a part of the group and you want to get yourself some uh, student of the gun, pimp hand, Arabica blend coffee, you can do that. We, we encourage you to do it. And uh, there you, you know go. What, you want to know what the best part is? What is the best part? In addition to it being really good coffee, the best part is that you're supporting mm. s- other people that are in the student of the gun audience. That's right. You're because supporting the, grad program members. Yes. Our grad program members are roasting this and shipping it out to you that's right so this is this is a a student of the gun exclusive product it's by student of the gun for student of the gun uh and if you want to support your fellow students of the gun then you can do that if you don't want to well then you don't have to you can just be like that and uh, <laughs> hey zach do me a favor that's what's not up? what our community is about yeah our community is about supporting each other do me a favor make sure that you add the uh, the student of the gun uh, the patriot fire team equipment guide uh to the store so that people can buy that equipment guide is not on the store well it's not on the one that i'm looking at it might be on a different one but in the one i'm looking at it's not there so uh Training. You wanted to talk about training? I'll talk about training. We have the precision rifle class. We only have one this year. One precision rifle class here in Wyoming on our mile-long shooting range. You will learn things that you cannot learn, and you'll do things you cannot do anywhere else. This is an an exclusive, all-inclusive. I guess it's an all-inclusive exclusive. Uh, and so what you get is you get your food, you get your lodging, you get your training, range fees, everything. It's all included. 
Uh, and that is available, right? We, we still have some slots available. That was your reminder that we still have some slots available. So when you hear that sound, you should go to shopsotg.com and sign up for the precision rifle class. All right. Uh, let us go ahead and move on to our student of the gun homeroom brought to you by crossbreed holsters. Oh, man, this just won't stop happening. Wh who is the dude? Pogue. How can I forget Pogue? Mr. Pogue, you guys remember the the uh, what? How did he refer to himself as an outdoor expert or a wilderness expert or a, something like that? I don't remember. And he wrote a story about how you crazy people out there think you should carry guns in the woods and in the field. And he's a wildlife expert, and he's never in 37 million years needed to use a gun. As a matter of fact, he wrote an article telling you that you're more likely to hurt yourself by carrying a gun than you are to ever need one to protect yourself from a wild animal. Yeah. So since Mr. Pogue wrote that story, we've had only, what, 12, 20, 37 a hundred incidents where that proved him to be a complete and total dumbass. Well, this Jared, the you guys remember the the story we just did about the bear going into the tent, attacking the mom and, and the kid. Same place. Yeah, it was the same place. It was Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. So if you're in Tennessee, you better be strapped because the bears, because it's human season for Isn't the bears. A requirement to be in Tennessee anyway. Well, you should be if you're well in Nashville. They're pretty much Nashville's like Hollywood East now. It's full of douchebags. But uh, in Seaverville, I've been to Seaverville um, and Seaverville and Pigeon Forge, you know, Pigeon Forge and Seaverville. You've been there, right? Yep, for sure. That's where they have the smoke. Great Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, so I'm going to have there's actually audio with this. It's not that long of an audio. And, and it, I want you guys to listen to this, Zach. If you could play the audio, the story is 90 year old woman talks about terrifying experience after being attacked by a bear. They're like, what was a 90 year old woman doing in the woods, camping in a tent with her food? No, she was actually at home at her house or porch. And his, his face was right in my face. For 45 years, Althea Williams has lived at this home in Wares Valley, not far from Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So she's very used to bears roaming through her yard. But a bear on Wednesday did not just pass by. And I jumped up, and by the time I got up, that bear was standing up in my face. And I guess as I got this chair right here, it got my arm, and I got the chair out like this. And <clears throat> it was standing in my face. So I just kept doing this with the chair and it, it finally went off. William said she was sitting on her swing with a bottle of water when the bear jumped onto the porch. I'd seen it before, but I, <clears throat> I hadn't been out around it because it had the cubs, you know. And I, well, I wasn't around any of them, but I've been sitting here a lot of times when they walk up here and they don't bother you. Williams had to go to the hospital. She has stitches for what she calls a very bad skin tear under her bandage. And while people say they're used to bears in the neighborhood, this year the bears have gotten worse. But that one, I didn't know it was on the place. I just was sitting here, hadn't been here but about two or three minutes. And it just, evidently it hurt me, I guess. It, I've got apples down there. And it just made a lunge at me. Now she's thankful that she's alive and a chair that was close enough to come between her and the bear. I've, I've been praising the Lord ever since then because I could have not have been here if it hadn't been for this lawn chair, I guess. Wow. What the what? All right, that's not cool. Yeah. All right, if if that was my grandma yeah. and that bear attacked my grandma, I'm, it's open season on that bear. <laughs> you don't attack someone's grandma. That's not cool. Uh, I'm going to find that bear. I'm going to shoot that son of a bitch.
And that's going to be the end of it. Well, you just can't shoot a bear because it attacks your grandma. The hell you can't. Uh, but this this got me to thinking because, well, what is, you know, what is the student of the gun homeroom all about? What is it's crossbreed? Crossbreed is our sponsor. We didn't mention them yet, so I don't want to be a dick and I want to do that. Um, brought to you by crossbreed. So when you go there, use the promo code SOTG. But it's all we're the homeroom is all about being dangerous on demand. You're like, OK, I get that. Um, dangerous on demand. How how do you get your 90 year old grandma to be dangerous on demand? Is there a way? Well, if if grandma is is physically able enough to, you know, get up, move around and do her chores. And I mean, uh, my mom is in her 70s and, and she gardens, you know, she takes care of ducks and chickens and she's got goats and stuff like that. She's physically able. Now, she's probably not going to, you know, your grandma's probably not going to be blasting off your your favorite shoddy, right? For a little hip, hipster lingo there, right? Uh, is there, what can you do? What can you do? And you're, did you hear that, Jerry? You hear that? Somebody just yelled, get her 22. <laughs> and yeah, a 22 is better than nothing. It's better than a sharp stick. But is there a center fire gun that actually uh, would be better than a 22? And the truth is, a lot of you guys aren't going to want to hear this, but the truth is that a 380, not a subcompact, tiny little mouse 380 that fits in your pocket, no, but actually a 380 that's the size of a normal gun uh, is very manageable, very manageable. You know, the the story we didn't have talked about this in a while, but the you know when when High Point first came out with a 380, people were like, "Why are you doing a 380? It's it's not a con because at the time, if you recall, Jared, every 380 on the market was a super subcompact micro pocket gun, right? Nobody thought of the 380 as a gun you would chamber or as a cartridge you would chamber in a full size gun. Everyone's like. Why would you make a high point so huge? It's big and it's giant and you're making it 380. That's not what you're supposed to do. 380s are supposed to be tiny little pocket guns. They're like, um, actually, the reason uh, the reason that that came about was because the designer, the head engineer at high point uh, had a, a, a an older gentleman who was a friend and he had arthritis and he wanted to be able to shoot a handgun, but even nine millimeters were a little too much it was it was bothering his hands he was so it's like well i'm going to take the same design and i'm put it in a 380 and see if that works and the answer is it did uh it did work it's extre- very mild recoiling uh several years ago taurus came out with a 380 it was one of their pt it might have been called a pt 380 i'm not sure uh, a 380 pistol and it was a it wasn't as big as like a Glock 17 but it was actually pretty good size and uh it held I believe it held th- yeah the PT 380 no that's not it that's that's a different one um uh, I just looked I just googled it and it said PT 380 uh 380 Taurus handguns yeah Taurus has these super sub micro compact 380s that's not what I'm talking about this was actually a a good sized gun, and I remember shooting it, thinking, "Wow, this is super comfortable." And I believe the mags held twelve or thirteen rounds of three eighty. You're like, "Well, three eighty is not a man's cartridge. It's not. A, not you're not going to do. What are you going to do with a three eighty? I don't know. I would say, Jared, would you say a three eighty is better than a lawn chair? Yes. You know, 380 is probably better than the lawn chair. You could couple the 380 with the lawn chair. With the lawn chair. You could hold the lawn chair in your left hand. And oh, All right. So, man, I tell you what, it is. It's something. So where are we at? No, grandmas and gats. Gats and grandmas. So a lot of folks out there like, well, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, I don't know. What are you going to do? Uh, there are solutions. Just because it's not your solution, that's the problem that a lot of guys have is because they, they're they all rockheads and they all think like me, like, what would I want? Well, it's not you, hippie. It's not about you. It's about someone else. And sometimes 
what you think is the perfect solution is not the perfect solution for somebody else, especially your 90 year old grandma. So, uh, first of all, I mean, forget bears. I don't want my grandma sitting on the porch and some crackhead walking up and like stealing all her stuff or doing, you know, bad stuff to her. Uh, I would rather that my grandma, well, my grandma's not here anymore. Bless your heart. But, um, you know, shoot a mother lover in the face with a 380. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Jared? Not mean. Not mean. So, uh, you're like, well, what are you going to do if you can't shoot a bear with a 380? Why? Well, what do you mean? It's not going to do anything. It won't. There's a, a, a remember the story Jared we had about the uh, the the guide, the pilot guide in Alaska, the the float plane guide, who used his his Smith and Wesson nine millimeter compact to stop a bear that burst out of the w- woods just like it was a bamo. They were just walking to their seaplane, and here comes this bear. Bam! I'm going to kill you. And he emptied that nine mil into its facial area, and it's it expired. So you're like, hey, well, I don't know what you think you're going to do with that. Well, I would rather have a 380 in my hand than a lawn chair. You know, if that's the options or a stick or a rake or a broom or whatever, you know, uh, and it's not always about bears. Sometimes it's about human predators. Uh, so what you have to do once in a while, if you're a guy, if you're a man, you need to park your ego and your you know, like, this is what I would carry. And if you're not going to carry what I carry, then then don't carry anything at all. It's kind of like those those jerk wads on the uh, on the uh, the the World Wide Web. Uh, like, oh, I'd rather not have a gun than own a high point. Really? Because what you just said shows me that you're a giant douchebag. That single sentence showed me exactly where you are in your road to mastery. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather not have a gun. Well, good. You're an idiot. You're a complete imbecile. I would rather that my grandma had a a 380 high point than have to fend off a bear or a whatever with a freaking chair, a lawn chair. Oh. So, ladies and germs, germs and ladies, uh sometimes uh grandmas need gats. Uh we should we could start a campaign called Gats for Grandmas. You think that'd be worthwhile? <laughs> we need to get with the people at a high point. We're like, we're, we're going to start a program called Gats for Grandmas. Um, actually, Jared, I just had an idea. Cool. I I know I'm somebody that write makes the idea it down, and then I know somebody that makes those uh, those point somebody to head up that the actual. <laughs> the I'm gonna talk to, through of that idea. I'm gonna talk to my boy Charlie, and. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. So write that down. All right. There you go. And, and, and this isn't even so much a bear story as it's a grandma needs a gun story, but it's still a bear story. And holy, holy balls, people. It, it, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This, this, it's only June. How many bear attacks have we had now, Jared? Uh, quite like, a few. We've lost track. And it's only June when we've lost track of the bear attacks and you know, these, these Tennessee bear attacks are all black bears. Yeah. It's like, Oh, black bears are very just curious and gentle and a black bear would, I know that a grizzly bear might attack you, but a black bear would never attack you. Ask the kid who got pulled out of his sleeping bag by his skull. That was a black bear. This uh, lady has been seeing bears for uh, I probably 45 years. Like mm-hmm. she said, and, uh, this is the first time she's been attacked by one. So even though it doesn't happen often, it still it happens. Happen. Yeah. And you only have to be killed one time. How many times do you need to be attacked by a bear before yeah. it, it ruins your day? You know? Oh, man. And I tell you what, when old people, in this is this is reality. It's it's not a fun reality, but it's a sad reality. When old people get injured, it take, it's hard. To, it, the older you get, the harder it is to recover from injury. This poor lady got clawed by this bear and she's, she's going to be, it's going to be a while for that heels. 
All right, let's move on to the uh, the Northeast, the glorious People's Republic of New York, where you're not allowed to carry a gun, but if you want to kill your newborn baby, go for it. That's right. Jared, you got the story open here? Uh, NYPD. Me right as I was yawning, says this is from AmericanMilitaryNews.com. NYPD is offering $1,000 reward for tips on illegal fireworks as 4th of July approaches. Oh. Freedom anymore. Police are offering $1,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone possessing or distributing fireworks on Staten Island. According to a post on Monday on Twitter by the NYPD's 120th precinct, it says, quote, fireworks are illegal. If you use fireworks, you or someone else can get seriously hurt. You, you know what? how else you can get seriously hurt in New York? By riding the subway. Walking down the street and NYPD shooting you. By it, and to, to continue, it says reward for information leading to the arrest of con and conviction of persons possessing or distributing fireworks. Yeah. Authorities warn that they can seize a person's vehicle or close a business in connection with a fireworks arrest. To report a crime in progress involving fireworks, residents should call the Popo. Oh, okay. I, I'm not going to let this go. I'm not going to let this go. New York City is in the midst of a crime wave right now. The, the it's oh here we go march 5th this is oh that's oh that's a long time ago i, mean, I was like oh, i was like okay uh march 5th crime wave continues in 2022 as city rolls out blah 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 to combat it april 6th major crime in new york city surges 44 percent this year remember anything over five percent is a crisis new york democrats now, pair maybe they consider firework yeah. crimes major crimes so only firework crimes maybe have maybe they've increased 44 percent. that's why they're offering this reward new york crime will more police flatten crime wave of gun violence so in new york city crime theft homicide uh homicide is up five percent rape is up 17 percent uh robberies are up 44 percent and what is what are the brave courageous oh what are new york's finest out there doing where are they focusing their efforts we've got to stop these 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 are revelers these people they're they're gonna shoot off fireworks for the fourth of july and we gotta put a stop to that you scum you scum you Gestapo Stasi communist scum. The people of the city are being raped and robbed, stabbed and murdered like it's going out of style. And what are the brave, courageous men and women of the NYPD? Where, what are they focused on? If you use firecrackers, you're going to hurt yourself. You peasant. Are not oh inspector tanya kinsella commanding officer of the 120th precinct reminds you that fireworks are illegal and if you have fireworks we're gonna seize your vehicle and we're gonna close down your business i got an idea this is a crazy idea jared i got this idea maybe just maybe the NYPD might want to focus on the rapists, the murderers, the subway robbers. When, when you're living in a city where robbery is up 44% in one year, well, rapes are, yeah, rapes are only up 17%. That means they had the same amount plus 17% more as last year. Well, yeah. I don't know. Well, but but homicides are only up 6%. Oh, well, whoopity-doo. 
Ooh. So crime is violent crime, rape, robbery, murder. Those are all on the rise in good old New York City. But what are they what are they concerned about? Oh you you people in your in your illegal fireworks and we're gonna find you. You say, well, come on, Paul. Come on, man. I mean, come on, man. No, here's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. Every human, every popo, every police officer only has so much time. They only have so many resources. They only have. So if you're focusing your efforts and whose money, Jared, when when the, the New York City popo are giving out thousand dollar snitch rewards, whose money is that? Where did it come from? Well, it's the city's money. Hmm. What, so the city produces money now? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that the city uh, was gainfully employed and produced money. Yeah, they have, uh, they've invested money and they make returns on that money. That oh, do they produce a product? So, so do it's, they, it's uh, their money. Oh, 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 so yeah. They printed it. I mean, who cares? Yeah, they just print more, I guess. Yeah. So you know what? All you uh, brave, bold New York's finest, you can go fornicate yourself. You're scum. And I'm sick of it. When, when you have a a uh, historic crime wave going on in your city, maybe you might, you might want to get your priorities right. M maybe you might want to lay off the citizens who, well, and you know what it is, Jared. It's they they can't allow this patriotic celebration of the birth of the nation. You you peasants think you're gonna celebrate the birth of America with fireworks? Yeah, like we've been doing since day one. Well, not here, you're not. So the good news is, if you are a peasant slave of New York, although it is illegal for you to use firecrackers on the 4th of July, if you have a, a baby that day and you find it to be inconvenient, the state of New York says you can go ahead and kill it. because. We wouldn't want you to be inconvenienced. Isn't that great? Isn't that a wonderful world we're living in where they can seize your vehicle and close your business for having for possessing illegal fireworks? But if you carry a baby to full term and, and it comes out and you're like, it's got red hair. Let's just go ahead and let's flush that one and try again later. They're like, cool. This is the America that you're living in. And I'm sorry if it bothers you, but it's reality. And the reason it is, the reason that the Gestapo, that the NYPD Gestapo can treat you like this is because you let them. And because the people of New York keep electing communists to be their mayors. So there's that. Uh, and I, I guess at the end of the day, Jared, before we jump off to the disarmed by lies, uh, the people of New York get exactly what they deserve in a police department because the police chief and the commissioners and all of the the uh, the woke PC affirmative action appointees that are in charge of the police department, they're there because the, the people of New York keep electing liberal Democrat communists to be their mayors. So if you guys would stop that, then maybe things would get better. But you're not going to because you're idiot slaves and you get what you deserve. All right, disarmed by lies. We, our side, the good guys, and we are the good guys. Uh, we continuously attempt to argue facts and logic in the support of constitutional rights, uh, you know, the Bill of Rights, the United States Constitution, uh, inalienable rights. We, we use facts, history, and logic to argue, but we're arguing with emotionally driven liars who care nothing for history or facts or even the law. We say, yeah, but the law says right here, you're not as a, as a uh, representative of the people. <laughs> as a rep, you can't do that. You see, because the law says you don't have the authority. Yeah, but we don't care. We're just going to ignore that. But 
what you're just going to ignore the constitution yeah we, it gets in our way and 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 it's a crisis this is a crisis so we we can't stop and worry about facts and laws and history and anything like that because okay so uh story number one that if if your blood isn't boiling if you haven't taken your bp medication yet today go ahead and do that right now this is uh and vice.com is not exactly people are like yeah oh vice.com that is a hardcore far right maga hat wearing news or no they're actually not when vice if vice is calling you out you must really be screwing up so yeah this this broke june 17th which was uh what friday yeah. so this this broke right as you were going into father's day weekend jared says uvaldi hires private law firm to argue it doesn't have to release school shooting public records some of the records relating to rob elementary school shooting could be highly embarrassing that's quote involve emotional distress emotional slash mental distress stupid ads and are quote not of legitimate concern to the public end quote that's what the lawyers are so the lawyers for the city of uvalde and the uvalde police department are saying that we're not gonna allow let the public see these because they could be They're quote embarrassing. highly embarrassing to whom so the three things that were said by the lawyers highly embarrassing emotional slash mental distress and not of legitimate concern to the public but isn't if now, anything to do with a school is involving emotional and mental distress that does not mean by default that it's of legitimate concern to the public um all right so the, going down the city of uvalde and its police department are working they're working with a private law firm to prevent the release of nearly any record related to the mass shooting at Robb Elementary School in which 19 children and two teachers died. It was according to a letter obtained by Motherboard in response to a series of public information requests we made. The public records Uvalde is trying to suppress included body camera footage, photos, 911 calls, emails, texts, criminal records, and more. So right now, they're the the criminals who pretend to be our quote representatives in Washington D.C. are panic. They're 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 uh, creating gun control hysteria. We've got to do something. We have to do it now. We have to disarm the American people. You mean the ones that are predisposed to obey the law? Yes, those people have to be disarmed because bad people will do bad things. And you say, yeah, but. And this, what is the argument, Jared? What is the argument that we get from Diana DeGette and Chuck Schumer and all at all? When when we say, yeah, no, we actually need guns that are full of ammunition to protect ourselves, and then they say to us, "That's we have what the we police. have." That's right. Remember, remember, Double D for a double dose of stupid uh, said, "That's why we have nine one one. You don't need a high capacity gun." That's why we have 911. So, real quick, going back, what are the things that they listed, like body cam and what else? Oh, uh, yeah, it said body camera footage, photos, 911 calls, emails, text messages, criminal records, and more. Criminal records. So, right. what are the odds we're going to find out that this little scumbag had a long history oh. of being watched by the FBI and had been arrested oh. for multiple violent offenses? Oh, what we know this already. This? We know that that uh, one of the things they the police had gone to his house multiple times. One of the things he'd done is he would like driving around the neighborhood with a BB gun, shooting people randomly and stuff like that. We know this was a scumbag. We know the police were aware of him. What we don't know and what has been hinted at was that the FBI was aware of this guy. Of course, they were aware of when well, they gave him the money to buy the guns. <laughs> Of course they were aware of him or was it the cia i don't know so ladies and gentlemen who do the let's, let's go and pump the brakes for a second so who does the oh, uvalde police department work for they work for themselves are they this autonomous organization they're they're up here and you peasant scum are down here who pays these guys salary 
Uh, what? Well, the people do. Oh, the people that are demanding the records? Yeah. So what we have is we have the the government at odds with the people. We have the government telling the people, you peasants don't need that information. And we're going to lawyer up. You're lawyering. So the police department is lawyering up to prevent the peasants from getting that information. So we're being told that we have to, that every law abiding citizen gun owner in America needs to accept. It's just time for you to accept more gun control. Matthew McConaughey went and cried. Because because we know when a celebrity goes in and cries on camera that we have to do whatever they want, you know. Goes, this is insane. What the Uvalde Police Department did by their cowardice, their corruption, and their inaction was they guaranteed that this was going to be a mass shooting. They guaranteed it was going to be a slaughter. Their actions and or inactions, well, their actions by arresting parents, keeping people who were trying to rescue children out of the school, um, guaranteed the bloodshed. Down here it says um, they want to be exempted from releasing a wide variety of records, in part because it's being sued, in part because some of the records could include highly embarrassing information, in part because some of the information is not of legitimate concern to the public, mm -hmm. in part because the information could reveal methods, techniques, and strategies for preventing and predicting crime. Really? You mean all the ones so, that clearly failed spectacularly and horribly? So You mean like arresting parents? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying here is yeah. the, the, the specifically the part where it says reveal methods, techniques, and strategies for preventing and predicting crime. Well, they didn't prevent or predict yeah. crime in this thing, in so this shooting that happened. So, so what the hell are they talking about? Everything they did made it worse. So you say, okay, Paul, but you know, you don't know. Oh, see that I wanted to put that story first because this next one, this next one from dailywire.com and this was from June 18th and a colonel from the tech, I think it's Texas DPI, Texas Department or uh, what is it? Department of Investigation. It says video shows police never tried to open door to get in Texas classroom where a shooter was. This is June 18th, 2022. Law enforcement officials reportedly never tried to open the door at Texas Elementary School last month where a shooter murdered 19 children. Surveillance footage shows that police never tried to open a door or two classrooms, a, a, a door to two classrooms at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde in the 77 minutes between the time the gunmen entered the rooms and massacred 21 people. And officers finally breached the door and killed him. So it was 77 minutes to do that. And 77 that minutes, those Uvalde cops stood out there in the parking lot tasering and pepper spraying parents while children were being slaughtered inside the building. And because of that, you need to be disarmed. It was reported by the San Antonio Express News, noting that the information came from a law enforcement official who was involved in investigating law enforcement's response to the tragedy. Says investigators believe the 18-year-old gunman who killed 19 children and two teachers at the school on May 24th could not have locked the door to the connected classrooms from the inside. The doors are reportedly designed so that they can only be locked or unlocked from the outside, and police might have assumed that the door was locked. Are you got are, are we are we kidding each other here? It's crazy. The report said that it is not known if the door to the classroom where the 18-year-old Hispanic male was holed up was even locked. So first, the, the, this is, Jared, you know what this stinks like? You smell that stink? Remember when they, the, uh, the uh, mm, I got to be careful how I say this. Remember when the state 
orchestrated and carried out the the massacre in Las Vegas. And then for weeks, we, we would get one story and then people would pick that story. But like, yeah, but that seems like a lie. And like, oh, no, 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 not that story. This that's this story. You're like, yeah, but that seems like a lie too. Well, no, 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 no. not that story, but here's the latest story. You remember how the story kept changing? Like every week they're like, oh, no, no, we never we never meant to say that. Like when facts are facts, first of all, you don't go in first. You should never actually go in front of people and give people tell people what you are presenting as a fact. If you don't know it as a fact, um, that's one oh one. I mean, that, that's like press briefing one oh one. Don't tell them something that you don't know is true because they're going to find out it's not true and then you're going to look stupid. So as the as the Las Vegas massacre played out, they kept changing the story. Remember the the original one they like they they found uh, laptops, but the 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 memories are, had been removed. The memory cards had been removed. The hard drives, the hard drives have been taken out, and so we're all like, we're sitting here in our chairs thinking, hang on. So if you were a suicidal, your your plan was to kill a bunch of people, and then before the cops catch you, you're going to kill yourself. So, but you're thinking, you know what I'm going to do? If I'm going to be dead, I definitely don't want the cops to have the hard drive from my laptop. What? <laughs> Why would you remove the, la the hard drive from a laptop if you're planning on killing yourself? Because you weren't and because he didn't. And then when people started really getting angry and reporters started asking about, you know, like, asking the popo and the sheriff they're like none of this stuff that you're saying adds up they're like ah, oh we found a hard drive and it had kitty porn on it you did what yeah yeah he was a child molester and then this is when we raise our hands we're like what what does that have to do with the murder of 77 people but well no see what we do is when you ask too many questions we tell you that that person uh, is a child molester and then you shut up because if you keep asking questions then it's going to seem like you're supporting a child molester so you have to shut up now oh i didn't know that see they they, they figured that out in 93 when they burned the branch davidians to death and then when people started asking questions they're like david crash was a child molester what so that's why you went there to kill him? No, we went there because we didn't like that they were selling guns at gun shows and we were going to crack down on them. And, and But then it didn't work out, so we had to burn them all to death. So after you burn them all to death, then you're like, yeah, and here's a child molester. So if, if you defend him or ask any questions at all about what we did, then you obviously support a child molester. And I don't know how you can sleep at night. And you say, well, what does that have to do with this? It's guys, it's the same MO. It stinks. So they came out and they're like, oh, remember, remember the key story, Jared? It's only been a couple of weeks. They, they couldn't get in because they couldn't find a key. Oh, we couldn't get in the classroom because we couldn't find a key. No one had a key. It was door was locked or couldn't so, find a key. So if the door was locked, that means it was locked from the outside and who locked it? You're like, you're telling me and, and that's we came to this microphone and I said, all right, so you big, bad Uvalde SWAT cops. So if if you got a uh, a confidential informant told you that the guy on on East Third Street had two hundred dollars of marijuana in his house and uh, and it's, you execute a no knock raid at 3 a.m., would you not go in the house because you couldn't find a key? Oh, no, we'll smash that mother loving door down and drag that sucker out and kill his dog while we're at it. So you you look me, the American public in the eye and say, well, the reason we just effed around for an hour and 15 minutes uh, was because we couldn't find a key. What? From the information that I've read about this thing, what I realize is that the highly embarrassing information is it, it draws a direct correlation to 
the inability of the people making decisions in this point, in this um, instance, to actually make a good decision. They, they failed to make decisions that would save the children over and over. And there's two instances in here that, I, that I'll, uh, I'll read for you that support that. It says here that the, the news comes as a report, as a report from the New York Times revealed that a law enforcement official with the city, not the school district, who was armed with an AR-15 style rifle, had the opportunity to shoot the attacker before he entered the school, but did not because he hesitated over fear that he might hit kids in the background. So the the dude, the law enforcement official with the city, could have potentially stopped this from happening, but because he was more worried about the, his, the failure in his own skills and ability, mm. he didn't. So there's an instance of highly embarrassing information. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, this is a, a quote from, it says, the chief deputy sheriff said that any attempt to shoot the moving gunman would have been difficult. What? And, and that the other officer would have undoubtedly f- have faced harsh criticism and possibly even a criminal investigation had he missed and hit a bystander in the distance, especially a child. So also not having confidence in one's own ability to take care of the problem. But hang on a second, Jared. We see what nobody's talking about right now, what none of these criminal scumbags in Washington, D.C. are talking about right now. None of them are talking about taking AR-15s away from police departments. Because why? What are they? Is there they could uh, use they're the experts yes yes so the you as a stupid peasant should not be allowed to have that kind of you shouldn't be allowed to have a weapon of war and they shouldn't be on our streets and here's the second failure decision failure it says the, the decision to establish a perimeter outside of the classroom a little over, little over five minutes after the shooting began, shifted the police response from one in which where every officer would try to confront the gunman as fast as possible to one where the officers treated the gunman as barricaded and no longer killing. Well, that was Why would case. you think that? So, yeah. Based on what we know, Based, yeah. why would you do that? Going all the way back to, all right, the first, this, this is such, this is criminal behavior. And what should anger you to the point of needing blood pressure medicine is that you right now, there are criminal politicians doing crisis legislation to disarm you. Based around the failure of the... Based on the absolute and complete failure of the state. So the government, the state, is going to disarm you because the state completely failed in their mission to protect us so the solution to the state's failure is to put the blame on the citizen instead of storming the classroom a decision was made to deploy a negotiator and to muster a more heavily armed and shielded tactical entry force So instead of protecting the children that are being slaughtered inside the school, they decided that they needed to protect the police officers. Yeah. Oh, we can't just allow. The tactical entry force needed to be more heavily armed and shielded. This is criminal behavior. Jared, what is, for years, we've literally been pointing out this clown show of every time there's a shooting, every time there's a this, they, they roll all these guys out in tack gear. Well, they, they got their helmets and their vests and they got the rifles and they're standing around on the corner. What is the point in all that garbage? Yeah. And I'll tell you why. You know, it occurred to me when I was writing the new book, Jared, because I was talking about mindset, tactics, skill, and gear. This is the, the American police as a whole. What is their top priority? Mindset? Nope. Tactics? Nope skill no i might i better not shoot my gun i might miss that's your first if your first thought is i better not fire my gun i might miss 
skills not there what gear so the as we as professionally trained citizens know top of the tier mindset second tactics third skill fourth gear american law enforcement flips that on its head number one priority buying cool stuff that's how they solve a problem well, let's we, we're going to buy more gear we have to examine why this is the case it almost seems like it's by design it is by design well, why would this guy the the guy that had the opportunity to shoot this uh the the piece of crap that was murdering children before he entered this before he could but before, before he could do he any could harm do at all any harm it, why would he hesitate over fear that he might hit kids in, or not that why would he hesitate over fear of the repercussions of possibly missing the answer is because if you look at every instance where police failure happened or not even failure if police did the right thing and a bad outcome happened they're they're railed by everybody except it's in always, new york it's always the police's the police department or the police officer's fault where these things happen even if it's the right decision with the information had at the time in this case i'm not saying it is in this case but if you look at the history over the past two or three years of officer involved instances and especially if it's a white dude and, and a black dude the um the media takes that and they run with it where the officer made they did this thing because of whatever reason well what that's done is it's it's caused hesitation for the officers because now they're thinking about rather than taking care of this issue that they that, that he could have had the opportunity to do he's thinking about well what's going to happen in the media what's going to happen with my life and my, my family's life Oh, we've been we have, we've been talking about this for years. We've been talking about, it. and so the hard chargers, the 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 self starters, the people that are willing to make good decisions that are willing to put their lives in line, those guys are gone. They're gone. And what we've done, what we've allowed the demo and the war, the full scale hardcore war on American policing started the first year Comrade Barry took office. And he did a press, remember he did the, the officer acted stupidly. He, the president of the United States decided that it was his job to go on TV and talk about a local dispute. It was a local dispute, it had nothing to do with national politics and say the officer acted stupidly. He had no, he had no facts. He just knew what his briefers told him. And then he ordered the DOJ to start investigating police agencies for pattern and practice of racism and institutional racism. Blah, 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 blah. And so, and you're like, oh, come on, man. That was all the way back when Barry, the communist scumbag, became the president. Yeah, I know. And it hasn't stopped. And the people that were self starters, the people that were highly motivated, the guys who told dirty, offensive jokes and smoked cigarettes and drank black coffee. And, you know, those guys, they all said, screw this crap. Why would I want to subject myself to this? And so what did they go about hiring? So Comrade Barry, and it was just, it followed on. They're like, well, and all the major cities did it. They started EEOC hiring. Oh, you're way too white and straight to get a job here, buddy. So rather than hire the most qualified, intelligent people, they looked they're like, well, what color does they have? Do they have a vagina? Do they do? Are they a an ethnic minority? Remember Minneapolis, like proudly, so proud, the first Muslim immigrant ever to be a police officer on the Minneapolis PD, and what did he do? He went he almost straight out. He was only on the job like a couple of years, and he straight out murdered a woman, a white woman, who was actually the respondent, who actually called the police. And oh, they let him out of jail. Did you know that, Jaron? 
the the Muslim, the black Muslim cop in Minneapolis that killed the white woman who had actually called the police for help. They let him out of jail. Yeah. And and they applauded that. The scumbags in, in Minneapolis applauded that. To uh, wrap up this story here, it says Bill Francis, a former FBI agent who was a senior leader on the Bureau's hostage rescue team for 17 years, told the Times that- What kind of team was it? Hostage rescue. Oh, I thought it was a roasting, hostage roasting team. But anyway. Told the Times that officials, quote, made a poor decision defining that as a hostage barricade situation. And he said, because, quote, the longer you delay in finding and eliminating the threat, the longer he has to continue to kill other victims. Wow. That right there. It's a good thing they went to a former FBI agent to get that statement because that statement could not have come from anyone else. So the longer you wait to address the threat, the longer the threat has to kill. What? I've never known. Man, I'm I'm glad that we have law enforcement experts like this to help us out. Because the rest of us would be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm too stupid to be allowed to own a gun. Good thing the police are there. So my question to you guys is this. Right now, the criminals... And I'm, and I'm not going to stop calling them criminals because when you break the law, you become a criminal. The Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights are the law. That's the law. When you conspire, when you go into a room and you publicly conspire to break the law, that makes you a criminal. I don't care whether you won a popularity contest in your district or not. Just because you won a popularity contest doesn't mean you get to break the law. And that's what they're doing. So the criminals in the state, the criminals like, you peasants can't be allowed to own mean, evil black rifles. Why? Because that's why we're here. Oh, so that's the police are here to protect us? Yeah, I mean, eventually, maybe, if, if they're not too afraid of getting hurt, so that's their excuse. Well, we remember when they that let that they let that lieutenant go on TV with Wolf Blitzer and say, "You don't understand, Wolf. Those officers they they could have been shot themselves." What? So that's the state of American policing. If a, if a, if a psycho, if a Democrat psycho is murdering you. The police probably they're like they can decide not to go because they might get hurt. Never in my life did I ever imagine that this is where we would be as a country, that we would have people in uniforms that are literally cowards, that are traitorous cowards and are hiding behind attorneys so they're not embarrassed by their cowardly behavior. Welcome to America 2022. Here's the deal. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. America, as you're listening to my words, you are a citizen of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America is still enforceable, as is the Bill of Rights. You have a choice to make. Will you allow criminals in government to disarm you based on lies will you allow yourself the state created a problem they made a problem they took a bad situation and made it worse and now their solution is to punish you shouldn't they be punishing themselves i got an idea First before you have to admit it was them before you come to me asking me for my guns why don't you go to uvalde pd and take theirs away i don't know why the uh, Uvalde, there's, there's, Jared, have you seen the cool pictures of the Uvalde SWAT team and how cool and badass they are? Look at our guns. You're criminals. You're cowards. Every one of them should be fired and brought up on dereliction charges. Every single one. Fornicate them. 
But good news is you're an American, and the Constitution is still enforceable, and you need to decide, are, will you be disarmed by lies and cowards and criminals, or will you stand up for your country? Choice is yours to make. All right, tomorrow on the uh, bonus hour, bonus hour number two, we're going to have a little bit of fun. So uh, the White House recently formulated a really cool propaganda campaign. They did a little, they were going to do a cool propaganda photo op to make Sniffy Joe look, look, uh, what I want to say, um, like the everyman. They wanted him to seem approachable and like down to earth. And relatable. And relatable because his his poll numbers are in the absolute toilet because everyone who's not a soy fed mangina uh, brainwashed imbecile understands this guy is a criminal. And he's a dangerous criminal and the people around him are dangerous criminals. So they're like, oh, we got a great idea. We're going to run this guy out, make him look like the every man didn't really work out for him. We got a leadership trait for you guys and a fighting fitness. Oh, oh, and uh, did you guys hear about the leftist, left wing, socialist insurrection that happened at the Capitol building? Probably not, because it wasn't. They weren't wearing MAGA hats, but it happened, and they're going to pretend it didn't happen. But that's okay. We'll talk about it. That's all coming up tomorrow. If you'd like to be with us, Jared, how can they be with us tomorrow? Super easy. Go to get SOTG. Follow the directions there. That's get SOTG.com. Follow the directions. And, uh, join us tomorrow. Yep. You can be there. Until that time, remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.